Good evening, friends. I'm so glad you're joining us tonight. It is April 15th, Wednesday after Easter. We're still celebrating Easter. We're on day number three out of 50. However your day was, maybe it was bored sitting at home. Maybe you got wet during the rain. Maybe you had to deal with children or with work. Let us now find the time to get centered. I'm going to light the candle and I invite you to find the peace of Christ in you. Let us center as we pray together. Holy One, we celebrate the new life that you have created over and over. We all need and want resurrection, and we all have witnesses new life. The way in which we are reborn from our darkest moments, especially in times when we couldn't see a way out, was the hope that we feel as when we began to find our own voice. The joy that we feel when we see red tulips, when we hear laughing children, when we taste the season's first fresh strawberries. Resurrection is everywhere, not just thousands of years ago in Jerusalem, but the resurrection is here as well. Resurrection is in giving each other the benefit of the doubt, the second chance, and in letting someone else go first. It's a quiet conversation. When you listen to the cardinal sing, sing, watch the flowers blossom, experience forgiveness, and silently watch a crane in the park. Resurrection is found anywhere there is light and hope and reconciliation. It is anywhere where we feel abundance community and love and we experience the risen Christ. Amen. I invite you tonight to ponder the question, so what? So what? So what difference does it make that I am staying home? So what? So what is the meaning of Easter? So what? And so I invite you today to listen to the scripture reading, this time the resurrection story from Mark, not from Matthew. Mark is the second gospel in our Bible, even though Mark is the first one written. Mark is the shortest gospel of all of them, only 16 chapters. So in the last chapter, in chapter 16, we read, When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they may go and anoint him. And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they looked up, they noticed that the stone had already been rolled away. It was a very big stone. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. But he said to them, don't be afraid. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised and is not here. This is, however, the place where they laid him. Now, go and tell his disciples and Peter, Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. 
The women went out of the tomb and fled, beside themselves with fear. And they said nothing to anyone because of their fear. It's the word of God for the people of God. So what? I wonder. So what? Mark's gospel make me wonder because Mark is so plain. No fliffy fluff around. He just says it, it is. In the beginning, we have no birth narrative, just straight away the story. And here and now at Easter, it's a little bit different. Mark is the only gospel reader, a writer has no appearance of the risen Christ. Just not there. It is the tomb is empty and they hear the message. They don't see, they don't experience the risen Christ. All what we know is an empty tomb, an, an angel announcing the good news that Jesus has been raised from the dead, a promise that Jesus has gone before them and will meet them as promised, a word of instruction that these women should go and tell others of the good news, and a description of these women. And what is even more fascinating, all amazement and fear. The last verse of the original Mark's ending is, the women went out of the tomb and fled, beside themselves with fear, and they said nothing to anyone because of their fear. And much later, much, much later, because people knew you can't finish a gospel with they said nothing because of fear. Much, much later, a second ending was added to Mark's gospel. So what? I wonder. So what? These women went out of the tomb, fled full of fear, and they said nothing because of fear. And it makes me wonder, this is the first gospel reading, and if they're left with fear, how did it happen that the gospel story was told and retold and retold? How did it happen? For me, that ending, they're left with fear, is actually a consultation. It actually means to me that sometimes faith can be difficult. The journey of faith can be a struggle. Faith is not always a cakewalk. Faith is difficult. Faith is for the ordinary people just like these people, like these women. And they're left with terror and amazement and in fear. They are stunned by the inexplicable news of Easter. What happened next? God is patient. God gave these women time. Time to reflect of what happened. Time and comfort that finally they could tell. And I want to thank Mark's Gospel because I sometimes need time. Maybe that's the introvert in me, but I sometimes need time, especially when I do not know what to say or what just happened. So what? I wonder. God is challenging us to do the same. When there's the impossible to fathom, we can wonder, so what? And then when we feel safe with ourselves and with those around us, then we can share the story as well. I hope that you feel safe, that you feel safe to tell the story and that you know what happened 
so what? Because that story, that story makes a difference. And you, you can make a difference as well. Because who knows what would have happened if these women would have stayed silent? Who knows what would have happened? Thank you, God, for Mark's gospel. Thank you, God, for people who were afraid, who were people like you and me who sometimes don't have any words, and that people had questions because they did not know how to say. And thank you, Mark. Thank you, God, for Mark, who does not give easy answers. Because these women, as I said, we're afraid. But we know we do not need to be afraid. We have the assurance that Christ is with us all the time. What? That's the Easter story. So what? The women were afraid. Now what? You go and tell others. Because that's the challenge of Easter. That's the challenge of our faith. I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, in this Easter week, we are reminded of the resurrection of Jesus, the promise of a life in you. How even in the darkest of days, also we can be raised up, broken open and made new again, just like the promise given to us. However, Lord, when we look around us, we lament all what we see, what we hear, especially now in the time of COVID-19, unemployment, hardship, illness, and death, and the numbers are rising. Here in our communities, down the streets, near and far. We are feeling pain, sadness, anger, vulnerability, and fear. Fear just like the women at the tomb. We ask you, please, walk with us in our journey so that we can experience the resurrection. Break us open, give us new eyes and a new heart. Let peace be on the tip of our tongues and in the palms of our hands so that we can all answer the question, what? The resurrection, so what? It happened and now what? We share the story of good news, amen. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And Reverend Dan will lead tomorrow, everybody in Vespers. And I see you again on Friday. Have a good night. Bye-bye.